the name of Jesus. We honor your presence right now. We welcome your sweet presence, Holy Spirit. We welcome your working in our lives, even at this moment. We say you are Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. We bow down before you, even this morning. We humble ourselves before you, Father. We honor you, Father, to say there is no other God in our lives except you, Father. Your kingdom has come in our lives. Your kingdom has come in our families, Father. Your kingdom has come in our communities. Your kingdom has come in our nation, Father. And we listen only to you, Father. We listen to your voice, Father. We'll obey your voice, Father, in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Today we are breaking as we start, as the Lord said of us, shared uh, today. He led something in my heart that to break the bondage of fear. There are some people who are gripped by fear in their lives. Maybe this fear happened, maybe your, whole, your house or your home was broken into, or your car was stolen or something or you were abused, or bullied, or something. But this fear has been gripping in your heart. Even when you are at home, there's fear. There's this fear is gripping you wherever you go. The Lord just gave me that word of knowledge to that there are those people, even maybe it's one person, or that fear, it does not belong to you. God has given us the spirit of freedom. He has given us courage, the spirit of courage and sound mind. Faith and fear do not stay together in one place. If you are a born-again child of God, it is faith that, has, that must rule and dominate in your heart. Fear has got no place in your life. So I, I would like the, that person or those people to come. Don't, don't be afraid. Just come. This fear has been, has been creeping has been something that happened in your life, maybe something tragic happened in your life, or you were attacked, or stabbed, or attacked by thugs, or something, or robbed, or something, but the Lord said in my heart, there are those people. As you are coming up to the altar, don't take it again as you go, because God is setting you free today in the name of Jesus. The power of the blood of Jesus, the power of the blood of Jesus is above that fear, that cause of fear. We are removing it now. Those psychological scars, we are removing them now. In the name of Jesus, we are removing them now. Yes, it's happening right now. To some, it's happening. The power of God is coming down upon them right now. Last Sunday, Brother Adrian was ministering here and... God gave him a word of knowledge about somebody with a shoulder blade, which was a, a, a pro, had a problem. And this gentleman here is, a, is not a member of our church. He used to visit us in the old building. It was the first time for him to come in this new auditorium. So God has done something in his life, so he must say it himself. <laughs> I greet you all in the name of our Lord, wonderful Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, last week, as Pastor Mtwa said that, last week I visited this church and uh, the preacher of the day invited people who were having different sickness and everything. And then I whispered to my child and I said, it's me who's got that pain at the back. As I admitted that there was something very hot here on my pain at the back. Very hot. And then I, I doubted. First of all, I said, what must I do now? Must I go down or still sit here? I said, okay, let me go down. 
a wet year, but to cut the matter short, as I left the altar here, I was healed. Amen. Amen. This pain has troubled me since started in 2005. I went to uh, many doctors, all the x-rays were done. Every time I come from hospital x-ray, I'm told that, Mr. Petze, you know that you are coming from a very bad accident. You are blessed that you are still alive. Always I'm told that about this pain, there's nothing they can do. But as I'm telling you now, perfectly healed. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. He, something funny, it's not funny, but it's a miracle. It's called a miracle. I went down, that's a good altar. Trying to figure up, I never told anybody what's the problem because there were many people here. Uh, others, problem with the leg, chest, ear. But a person, I, still, I stood here, and a person from, from the audience, uh, let me call it like that, Uye Weza, he came and laid a hand on my back, directly on that pain, without me telling him that there's a problem here. Yeah. Revelation 12, 11 says, we have overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Uh, this gentleman who has come here, his name is Mbambeli Lupete. He's my cousin. <laughs> So I didn't know that you was coming to church uh, uh, that day. Uh, some years back, he had a serious car accident at, at Mbashe with a serious head injury. He was medically boarded. And uh, now this miracle is going to be big in our family of this healing because uh, the doctors said all this, he could not do anything but he is a miracle. After that, uh, as he was prayed for, he went to study uh, at uh, engineering diploma uh, against all odds at, at uh, Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. And he would pass with his 80% and all that and above. And he went and showed the results to the doctor. And the doctor said, is it you or is it somebody who wrote these exams for you? So... This is a big miracle. Hallelujah. And today, we are saying living and operating in the supernatural according to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is our message today. Living and operating in the body of Christ according to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. As soon as we are born again, all of us as children of God, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 happens. If you can show that scripture. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 happens to all of us. As soon as you say, yes, Jesus, come into my heart. Yes, Jesus, come into my life. As soon as you are born again, you accept Jesus Christ, you receive the blood of Jesus. The word of God says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Hallelujah. Salvation comes by faith. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And also you believe that Jesus can cleanse and wash your sins away. And thereafter, you, 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 you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You accept him as your Savior. As you say, yes, Jesus, come into my life. That process means the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you and washed you. Hallelujah. And therefore, the next step, which is very important, is water baptism. To be baptized in deep water. Uh, some, they say you must be baptized in sea, um, river, whatever. But here at downtown, we use a swimming pool uh, where you can be dipped. The whole body comes under water. So it symbolizes the death to sin, death to the old life. You are rising up with Christ into the new life. Uh, one thing which must come, of course, it does not always happen according to that order. 
that after you are baptized in water, you receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. To others, baptism in the Holy Spirit happens before they are baptized uh, in water. For instance, I got saved and then uh, it was a, a year later that I was uh, baptized in, in water. Of course, the church I was, they don't do water baptism. Uh, they do baptism of a, of a child, which is not scriptural. Baptizing a child. A child is dedicated, not baptized. And now after I got saved, I was in Port St. John's uh, that time. Uh, I think I got saved in 81, then 82, I was in Port St. John's. I was in a driving school there. And then uh, I met somebody whom I told him that I was saved. And he asked me, uh, have you been baptized? I said, no, I'm not baptized. He said, come, come, let me go and baptize you now. Then I said, no, I don't think this is the way it should happen. Uh, I refused because uh, it was a bit very much informal. So I went to, to do community development in Tsomo, uh, Skubudwili, and all those areas. So as I was there, I met the Mangoba family as I was ministering the gospel in those areas. And this mother, as we spoke, shared the salvation. He said, she told the testimony that she and the husband got saved almost at the same time. But the husband could not be baptized at that time because he, he was not yet dead. As we talked about baptism, he says, she was baptized first than the husband, although they were saved at the same time, because the husband was not yet dead. This is why it was delayed, the baptism. I said, what do you say? Dead? She said, no, there were some things in, her life, in his life which he was still doing like smoking, and all those things. And uh, they said, no, how can you go and be baptized whilst you are still handing nicotine? How does it happen? It will not happen like that. Make a decision now. So that day, I, was, I got a revelation about water baptism that day. And then when I went to Amtata, uh, I got the baptism in water. Hallelujah. And then Holy Spirit baptism, I think to me it happened before that, uh, as soon I, uh, after I got saved, uh, Holy Spirit baptism happened. So the baptism in the Holy Spirit helps you to have to receive a gift of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of the gift is to minister in the house of the Lord. The purpose of the gift of the Holy Spirit is not for ourselves. It's not to make our names great or the names of our churches great, but it is to help God's people. It is to release the anointing to other people, just like the miracle happened. God placed a gift of word of knowledge upon Adrian, and when he was ministering, he operated in his gift, and God performed a miracle. Hallelujah. And also in Luke 4, 18, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, if you can help us with the scripture. As you are a born again child of God, as you are a born again a child of God, God has given you that responsibility. The spirit of the Lord is on me, it's on you. Hallelujah. Can we read it together? The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. Hallelujah. What has happened? The spirit of the Lord is and God has done what? To proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free. Hallelujah. That's what God has done in your life. And he is going to do that through the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he has invested in your life. Hallelujah. And also, I knew that God also gave me a gift so that when I lay hands upon the sick and people will do it, will recover. Sometimes I would lay hands upon the people knowing, not knowing that this thing is going to happen, how it is going to happen, but I just obeyed the Lord and laid hand upon the sick person and God brings healing through that gift of healing. Hallelujah. I remember one time there was this uh, person who was addicted uh, 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 this person was addicted 
if you see those people, that's nothing. She was addicted to this thing, and she would order it in bulk. Order it in bulk, and, uh, and it would keep her for some time. So we preached the gospel, and thereafter, she says she had a problem. I laid hands upon her, a miracle happened. You know, when you are a young Christian, you, know, you don't know what's happening. You just obey the Lord, and you don't know what happens. Thereafter, I could see something happening upon her life, and God delivered her from that thing delivered her, only to meet her later in another church, and she came running. Do you remember praying for me? Uh, I think it was around 1985, 80, 85, 86, and when I met her around in 1983, and she came running and says, do you remember what, what, you, what God did through you? So I, I, I know that God placed that gift in me. Hallelujah. It's only to obey God and make use of it. So the body of Christ is functional only when we operate according to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. As we operate according to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ becomes functional. Becomes functional. The work of the ministry of the kingdom of God will be functional in your ministry. When you obey God, hallelujah. When I obey God in my family, obey God in the church situation, God performs a miracle uh, through the gifts that he has endowed upon my life. Hallelujah. Uh, today, within this short time, we're going to talk about the gift of wisdom. The gift of the word of knowledge. Those nine gifts the gift of faith, the gift of healings, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits. Tongues, interpretation of tongues. But first I want to come to the gift of prophecy which I think there has been a lot of confusion in the church at this time. And people confuse prophecy a lot. So I'm simply going to share what God has put uh, uh, to me in my heart to share today. First of all, prophecy is to hear the voice of the Lord and become able to communicate his thoughts and ideas to the people. It's hearing the voice of God. It's not something that people fabricate themselves that it will be uh, acceptable or it will make them popular or something, but it is actually hearing from God. Make sure that you have heard from God and be able to translate what God has communicated to you to the people. So prophecy is revelation for edification. So it is a revelation to edify the church, to help the church grow, to help that person grow, to help that church, that person motivated. So prophecy, to prophesy is to speak, to, to speak a God's message to the other person. It is for edification, it is for exhortation. It comes always with encouragement. Encouragement. Prophecy must encourage. It must motivate. It must encourage. Also, it comes with comfort to the people of God. It comes with comfort to the people of God. As we have said, prophecy is one of the important factors which builds up people as individuals and the body of Christ at large. It stirs up the need for prayer and study and the, re and the reading of the word of God. When it has come, it encourages that person to go and be connected to prayer and be connected to the word of God. Therefore, it brings about growth. Hallelujah. 
It is not condemning. It is not condemning. It's not condemning. Once it comes with condemnation, you must question the source. Question the source. It brings light and vision. Life, vision, and light. It does not bring doom, gloom, and death. Anything spoken out of the gift of prophecy must always completely con be consistent with the scriptures. And it will never contradict God's word in any way. It will never contradict God's word in any way. Therefore, as we are rooted in the word of God, we will not run after prophets if we are rooted in the word of God. Because you are personally connected to God. And God can also bring a prophetic message even to you. Like for instance, after we have prayed, as people come for deliverance and receive salvation, and I say to you, just share your testimony, what has happened to you now? They start speaking those things. And I say to the person, you are now prophesying to yourself. You are now prophesying to yourself. God is bringing comfort. God is bringing restoration to you through yourself. It is not important to pronounce judgment and curses. So as a child of God, even if somebody has done something wrong to you, even if those thieves have stolen that spare wheel of your car, you are not to pronounce curses upon them. As a born again child of God, you pronounce blessings. Even to your enemies, you pronounce blessings as a child of God. Hallelujah. God is able. And also, one of the gifts which is very important uh, in the house of the Lord is the descending of spirits. Descending of spirits. This is crucial for the body of Christ. And most of Christians can exercise this one, descending of spirits. We miss it only when we disobey because the Holy Spirit is always the first to come and speak something into your life. Sometimes he speaks with a very soft voice. Very soft voice, but it's clear. The message is clear. He speaks with a soft voice to me, but the message is clear. Even if I heard it with a very soft voice, but it is clear. Ours is to obey. Descending of spirits, it is given to keep us safe. Descending of spirits is there to keep us safe as the body of Christ. People may say the right things, but they come from the wrong spirit. They may say right things, but it comes from the wrong spirit. But if you don't use the gift of discernment in your life, you will not know. You will not be able to detect this. So God gives us the ability to deal with deception. And most of the time, Deception comes through ignorance. If you are ignorant about the word of God, ignorant about the working of the Holy Spirit in your life, deception comes. Some things come, they look good, but they are not from God. Discernment or discerning spirit is a revelation gift working along with wisdom and knowledge. It works along with wisdom and knowledge. And therefore, you must be able to perceive the source of manifestation, whether this manifestation which is happening is from God, man, or the devil. The manifestation in that situation, is this God? 
is this man or is it the devil? So the spirit of discernment helps us to be in touch. Hallelujah. Just clap hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. There is more to your salvation than you think. There is more to your salvation than, than you think. There is more to salvation than you think. So in my life, I've made these things very much uh, deliberate. Time to pray. I know as a child of God, I pray throughout the day. Wherever I do anything, I pray. Before I, I start any, any work, I pray all the time. But a time came where I, I made it that I must not just generalize prayer. I must have a specific time to pray before I go to bed, where I put aside everything. And that time is dedicated to prayer and reading the word of God, kneeling down, praying, worshiping God, so that I have that touch, that personal touch with the Lord. Also in the morning as well, before I start the day, I have that special dedicated time to pray and read the word of God so that all the gifts that are in me are activated. And I make use of them throughout the day and in the ministry to the body of Christ. So Peter was able to discern a man who had wrong motives. Acts chapter 8, verse 18 to 24. Let us look at that example. If you can put us that verse, that scripture for us. So Peter was able to discern that this man had, had wrong motives. When Simon saw that the spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have, you have no part or share in the ministry because your heart is not right before God. Can you see that Peter had that spirit of, of discernment? Repent on this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such thought in your heart. Verse 23, for I see that you are full of bitterness and and captive to sin. So nobody told Peter about these things in the heart of this person. But the Holy Spirit told Peter. So that is what is called that spirit of discernment. That gift of discernment. We are in a battle. And the devil is cunning. We are in a battle. And the battle is in our mind. The battle is in our mind. Sometimes evil masquerades itself as good. Evil comes as good. Sometimes, especially connected to, to money. Connected to pleasure. It comes as if it is good. If you don't have that spirit of discernment, you will be caught up in it. And the consequences last forever. The consequences last forever. Hallelujah. So, as we grow as children of God, as we grow as children of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit must be operational in our lives. Hallelujah. One of the gifts which I just want to, to touch on which we must release, and uh, many people are, are suffering uh, of sicknesses, and uh, we have got the answer. We have the answer as children of God. We have got the answer. As you are sitting there, you have got the answer to many of the challenges in your family and in the community around you. 
Because God is working this through you. God is working this miracle through you. God is working in the lives of those people through you. Hallelujah. In the healings, it is the endowment with the power to perform miracles of healing. God endows you with the power to perform this miracle. Yours is just to be found in the right place. To be always found in the presence of the Lord. To be always found in the place called there, which is called the Holy of Holies. You must be found in the place called the Holy of Holies at all times. And as you are found in that place, God is going to work continually in your life. God is not going to work a miracle through your life only on Sundays. God is not going to work a miracle in your life only when you come from a prayer meeting. At any time, God is going to work in your life. Hallelujah. So healing is the restoration of health, soul, spirit, and body. Restoration of health in the soul, spirit, and body. And sickness comes through different types of openings. One of the openings is, is idolatry. It's idolatry. It, for example, worship ancestors. Some people in other nations, they worship animals. Uh, they worship cattle and all that. Idolatry, which is affecting most of the, of the churches, like in the, of, of the people in, the, in our nation, like in the Eastern Cape or in Africa. They say 75% of the people who are calling, who are calling them Christians are caught up in idolatry. Most of them, they still consult Sangomas. They still consult people called faith healers and all that. So which means that if you have something that else, else that you worship, you create an altar for that thing in your life. And it creates a door and the opening of the devil and the enemy to come into your life. If I feel that there is some form of sickness in my life, I must check myself. I must check where have I gone wrong? What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? Because I'm not supposed to be sick as a child of God. What have I done wrong? So God has placed us so that we bring healing. So Gift of healings apply in both physical and emotional areas of our lives. So we need this. And the purpose of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, purpose of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to, to create a greater impact. That is the purpose of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's not to make money for ourselves, to make a big name for ourselves, to create high profile for ourselves. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are, great, are there to create greater impact. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are there to call people to the kingdom of God. When the house is on fire, do you call people to come? Client researcher, do you call people to come in a street or in a village? They just drop down everything and run to the place where there's on fire. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit are meant to call people to the kingdom of God. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are meant to confirm that truly God is with us. They are there to confirm that truly we're working with the king. The Messiah is with us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are there to confirm accuracy of the word of God. To confirm accuracy. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit are there so that we can flow in the miraculous and the supernatural. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are there to make people believe in God and have faith in God. Hallelujah. People have faith in God. So we are charged today. We are given a responsibility once again today. What is your gift? Do you understand your gift? Can you tell your neighbor now as you are closing your gift? You are a born-again child of God. Just whisper to your neighbor, 
and tell him your gift. Do you know your gift? You have been saying for some time now. Just tell. Tell your neighbor your gift. What is your gift? What is your gift? Just tell your neighbor. Do you know your gift? Do you know your gift? Why are you operating? What are you operating on? What is your gift? Do you know your gift? If you don't know your gift, there's a, there's a challenge, there's a problem there. There's a challenge there, there's a challenge there. Go to the Holy Spirit. Do you have time to pray? Do you have time to pray? Do you have time to read the word? Do you have time to connect to the Holy Spirit? So I'm challenging now, what is your gift? What is your gift? Everyone, all of us, we must have that gift. It must be used for the house of the Lord. It must be used for your family. You must be a prophet in your family. You must be a prophet in your family. You must bring healing to your family. Restoration must come into your family. But what is your gift? Do you have time to pray? Do you have time to read the word of God? When last did you share your testimony to someone else? Hallelujah. As we are closing before, because of time, I am placing a challenge now. Maybe there's someone who has never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. And you have been wondering how this could happen in your life. Today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day of your salvation. Do we have that person? You can raise your hand wherever you are. You can raise your hand wherever you are. Any person? Hallelujah. The last prayer now. You don't know your gift. And it comes when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. You want to receive the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. It comes also by laying on of hands. By laying on of hands, it comes upon your life. You have been thirsty. You have been very thirsty to receive this power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. You can come.